Introducing the new haagen Trio Collection. Within each carton, you'll find layers of crispy, crackly Belgian chocolate between layers of creamy, delicious ice creams. Available in four unique flavors. Triple chocolate, salted caramel chocolate, coffee vanilla chocolate, and vanilla blackberry chocolate. Reward yourself with a simply sumptuous and extraordinary ice cream unlike any other with haagen Trio. Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to let go of your fears and limiting beliefs? Ready to live in the moment? Ready to live a positive life by creating new habits? You're in the right place. Join us every week at the Reinvent Yourself to Greatness with Sahar Show to learn how to create the happy life you always wanted and deserve now. Hello, hello, hello. This is your host, Sahar and Daddy, and I am here with you as every Wednesday at 5 p.m. for my podcast, Reinvent Yourself with Sahar. Uh, some housekeeping issues. Uh, I, want you, uh, I want you to have a phone call number if you feel like asking a question, making a comment, or just Calling to say hi, the call, num- the call number is 215-383-3736. Again, the call-in number is 215-383-3736. I would definitely love to hear from you. Uh, Today's podcast is about how we can change or how we can let go of the negative thoughts that we have in our mind and change them to positive ones. Actually, this was the uh, subject or this, this was the idea that I built my TED Talk a couple of weeks ago about it. So, And as soon as my TED Talk video will be released, I will put it online for you guys to tell me what you think about it. That being said, our um, website is www.reinventyourselftogreatness.com. And our email address is info at reinventyourselftogreatness.com. I would love if you can subscribe to our mailing list or you can subscribe to our podcast so you won't, leave, you won't miss any of our update. That being said, um, as usual, I will ask you a couple of questions. Uh, are you are your self doubts and fears preventing you from moving forward, better yet paralyzing you exactly at the place where you are? You're not moving forward. Are you getting stuck in your negative thoughts that no matter what anything positive in happen in your life or comes your way, you don't feel it and you just stay focused on the negativity? If you are that way, you are not alone because most people, especially women get comfortable in being in status quo, in their comfort zone. And we have been talking about comfort zone and status quo for a while now, even if they know that they are cheating themselves from success, even if they know that they're cheating themselves from the life they know that they have the potential for, especially for you fierce women preneurista out there. That being said, I know that I'm sure Um, that you notice that if something bad happens in a day or in our life, an event or a bad word or something, we hold on to our negative emotions and these negative events that happen in our life. We don't let go, or at least not as fast as we get stuck into these negative thoughts. No matter what kind of positive things happen to us, no matter what kind of words we hear, no matter what great things happen to us, if, if you are a woman preneur, no matter if an account called you and praised you or give you a new contract, you just stay focused on the negative thing. Why do we do that? I'm sure that you have met people that are always negative. So you know these people that, are so negative that they keep dragging you down? Or the people that always look for the negative in any situation, no matter how great it is? Like, for example, if they win the big lotto, all what they think about is how much taxes we're going to pay. It's not even what are we going to do with the money, how much we're going to enjoy our life, and this is a blessing, and we're grateful, and now we can 
uh, have a better future, our kids can go to college, we don't have to worry about money. No, they just focus on how to pay taxes. Or, and uh, this is what I'm sharing now is actually a true thing that happened. Someone graduating from Harvard, Harvard, and all what they could remember about their graduation day, that it was a cloudy day. Just like people are dying to go to schools like Harvard, but all what they could remember is that it was a cloudy day. Anyhow, you know the type, that the ones that we call stuck in the negative. I remember that when I started training a few years ago, I always, whenever I do training, um, I always give an evaluation at the end to make sure, you know, it's, it's for self-growth, for self-awareness, if you want to call it, to make sure that I'm getting better um, and not just like stagnating or even getting worse. So, for example, if I would have 50 people in the room and I would give them an evaluation, at the end of the session, I would get the evaluation forms. And if one person on one form said that, well, the temperature of the room was too high or too low, and so it's heating or, or air conditioning and it has nothing to do with me, I would still obsess about that negative comment, all what I will think about for even weeks. And it's funny, like I would have 49 great evaluations and the only thing that I would obsess with is the one thing that even I had nothing to do with. And it took me weeks and, and, and the beginning even months to go through that till one day I sat down and I started thinking about it and then it hit me that I had forgotten about the 95% positive comments that I had and just concentrated on the 5% negative that was there that I even had nothing to do with actually doing an injustice to myself. Then I looked around me and found that most people do that. People concentrate on the 5% of things that they don't have instead of focusing on the 95% of things they have and that they should be grateful for. And this has, why I'm saying this, because all this is connected. If we look at the 95% positive, we create pathways of gratitude in our mind and we invite abundance. But once we look only at the 5%, which is like a minuscule uh, ratio to whatever we have, we invite scarcity in our mind, and that's what we get. And we're going to talk more about that as we go. So the reason that we get stuck in the negative, again, our great chameleon friend, is fear. Because we have fears of not being smart enough or good enough. We have fear to disappoint ourselves or our loved ones. We have fears of being rejected or blamed, even have fear of success. We have fear of being ashamed or embarrassed or ridiculed. But I always need to bring it back to ourselves because remember, it's true that we cannot control anything that happens to us or coming to us, but we control 100% how we act and react to whatever happens to us. We are the masters of our universe. We always need to remember that. You know, We are the only one that can allow someone to mess up our day or make up our day. We make up our day, good, bad, or ugly. We do make it. And when you say someone else did that or messed up my day, you are giving away your control and you shouldn't. So it's important to remember this. What we believe we are is what we become. We feel what we think and we think what we feel. Again, what we believe we are is what we become. We feel what we think and we think what we feel. We do not see the word as it is. We see it as we are. It's about perceptions. The truth is that our brains are wired to notice the negative things in our life. And if we give the negative thoughts in our life free reign to become our main focus and do nothing about it, then complaining all the time and whining will only rewire our brains to notice more 
negative things and create even more negativity in our lives. It's like the chicken or the egg. I want to remind you that emotions are created by emotions. So if you take the word emotion, it's energy and motion together. Always remember that. Where is your energy coming from? And what is your energy pushing you to move to? And it becomes your emotion moving towards somewhere. It ha for example, and I heard this story, and, and it kind of stuck in my mind. I, I heard it a long, long time ago, and it kind of stuck in my mind, and it made perfect sense when I was putting this together. It has been said that when people used to train baby elephants when they were, like, just born, traditionally, they would tie them, they would tie their leg by a very thin rope to a post or to, to a tree, so they could not run away. And because they were so little, they didn't have enough strength. I mean, I'm totally against capture, capturing animal and, and putting them in cages or, or tying them down. And, and I'm, I just need to say that this is just a story and it might be an urban myth, but I'm just sharing it for you for a few. You will understand why I'm saying that in a second. So because the baby elephant were small, and though it was a very thin rope, they will try to pull at it in the beginning and struggle to set themselves free. But eventually, trying and trying and trying without success, their brain will come to realize that they can't break the rope. So they just give up. What happens is that these elef baby elephants grow really fat, of, fast, of course, and fat. And before long, they become the giant elephants that we are used to see. The interesting part here and why I'm sharing this story is that despite of their size, mentally, they still feel that they can't break that thin rope that keeps them always in their place, and they never try to break free. Isn't that amazing? They have conditioned their brain and mind through negative thinking, so they become incapable of breaking free. And this is the exact same thing that we do to our brain. We condition our brain um, into negativity, and that's what we... Remember, you reap what we saw. We reap what we saw. So if negative thoughts or negative emotions take hold of us, they will control our whole life. They will control our relationships, our dealings, our work, and everything will be tainted through very dark glass. And the end result is that we get stuck in an unhappy mode, and we either are too deep inside or we are not even willing to try to get out of it. So why do we get stuck in negative modes or negative thinking? Like I said, our brains are automatically reacting to whatever we perceive as threats. Either the threats are real or perceived. Either the threats are physical, psychological, or emotional. So to re when it reacts to a threat, when our brain reacts to a threat, it releases chemicals in our brains. And these chemicals are called hormones. When we are stressed, our brain releases stress hormones. So the action and reaction we get into our body, these stress hormones tells our body, prepare yourself for a fight. As a result, our reaction will be fight, flight, or freeze. And that response is automatic in our brain because our brain's first function in life is to protect us. And the sad thing that it's a fact that for the last 2 million years of human evolution, since the caveman, our brain never evolved or developed. It stayed the same as it was in the caveman. As human beings, we had previously to protect ourselves against predators, lions, tigers. That meant one thing, that meant if we don't fight, or flight, we will die. 
So our brains had to act as a survival tool, staying alert of the danger rather than enjoying our life. And so our brain developed a tendency to what we call negativity bias. And that's where all this is coming from. Our brain is more accustomed to threats than enjoyments or opportunities as a self-defense mechanism to protect ourselves. And to understand a little bit more about how our brain works, if we understand the basics, we will understand why we act this way. And once we understand why we act this way, we can actually um, treat or heal the way we feel or, or we can change our ways. So our brain is made of three, in a very simple way in three parts. The most inside or bottom part is called the reptilian, and we share that obviously with the reptilians. And this is the primitive part of the brain, and this is where the fight or flight or freeze process is. This is where the basic instincts that are for protection. Later on, when a little bit uh, of the brain evolved, it it, the second part came in, and it's called the mammalian brain. So we share that with mammalians, obviously. And it houses emotions and short-term memory. And the biggest emotion, I want you to guess what is the biggest emotion stored there. i give you one guess. Of course, it's fears. The third part, or the newest part, is... It's like a cap that surrounds the two other parts. It's called the neocortex or the new cortex or the cortical part of the brain. And it houses our critical analytical thinking, our problem solving, our innovation, our creativity. In summary, it houses our intellect. So when fear and limiting beliefs stresses us out, like I said, chemicals are released. And these stress hormones are, I'm sure you heard about them before, it's cortisol and epinephrine. What they do is that they flow in our body through our veins with the blood and they shut our second part of the brain, which is the mammalian part that has to do with the short memory and emotions. So it goes to the fear centers. And when the fear centers get activated, they put a break on our motivation centers and our ability and capability to decision making goes down the drain. I hope it's easy for you to kind of understand that. I'm making a video of it anyhow and I'm gonna post it on uh, I'm gonna post it on Friday if, if you wanna look at it more. So once this reaction is triggered by, we have in our brain, in the old brain, we have something called the amygdala, which is the alarm system. And it's in the back of our brain. It's a switchboard for anxiety. And when it perceives a threat, it starts signaling, sending like alarm, alarm, alarm to the rest of the brain to prepare the rest of the body to protect itself. And we get into the body war zone or system. And scientifically, it's called the sympathetic system. When the sympathetic system is activated, our hearts start beating faster. So it can pump enough blood, pump enough blood to our legs and arms and brains. And we begin to breathe quickly because we need to increase the amount of oxygen delivered where it's needed. And we sweat to cool off our body temperature. Basically, we are preparing for an attack. Our brains are muscles, and I want you to, to re always remind you of that. We can build muscle memory by exercising or practicing through repetition. So complaining feeds and grows the muscle of negativity. Gratitude and be thankful feeds and grows positivity. It's simple. It's really simple. We reap what we saw. Neurons that fire together stay together. When we lay down gratitude and be thankful, it creates actually new pathways in our brain more and more 
so we get into that positive thinking. But the same happens for negativity as well. And I want to remind you that the brain will, has been created not for, to protect us, but it also always finds a way to focus on what we feed it. So if we feed it positive attitude or thinking, that's what it will give us. Remember when we had the new computers and they would say garbage in, garbage out? That's the same thing. Whatever you feed your, your brain or your software of your computer, it will give you whatever you are feeding it. Our brain always will find what we focus on. And that's why we need to stop thinking about what we don't want and start thinking about what we do want. The brain can differentiate between negative and positive. Our conscious and subconscious cannot know the difference. It just hears what we say or think and acts on it. So we need it to be positive to get positive. So, for example, if I'm trying to stop smoking, if I will keep saying stop smoking, stop smoking, stop smoking, my brain does not know the difference between positive and negative. So it will just keep hearing smoking. So my brain will focus more on smoking and I will smoke more. And that's why we need to shift in our brain how we think. The more positivity we get in, the more positivity we get out. When our brain detects something that is happening outside of our normal range, the anxiety is triggers because our brain tries to keep us into the comfort zone for protection. The brain remembers failures and remembers the pain that came with these failures. So in order not to repeat these failures from the past, to avoid us the pain we went through, our brain steers us back into the comfort zone, into negativity, even if it's really bad for us. But in, it thinks it's protecting us. There is also another side where we feel guilty sometimes to be happy. Somewhere, growing up, our parents, teachers, friends, family, have hammered into our head that we have to suffer to be happy, that we have to pay a price for happiness. This is called a belief system of limitation. I have to tell you, I, I come from a culture when we laugh and like we really are like having a good laugh, we would look at each other and we, there is a saying that will say, I hope that nothing ha bad will happen. It's like, that we need to pay a price when we become happy. Once our mindset changes, everything on the outside will change to be aligned with it, and we start building our muscle memory. So let's talk about 10 things, 10 things, not one or two, 10 things on how to overcome negative thoughts. And you don't have to do all of them together. You can pick one of them. You can pick two of them. Whatever is comfortable for you to do, do it just one step at a time. Nothing happens overnight. To overcome negative thoughts, remember to be grateful. Gratitude. Because gratitude reinforces positive thinking, thinking that creates new pathways in our brain. Two, remain when, when something good happens, when something positive vibe happens to you, remain in it. Like if someone gives you a compliment, accept it and, and feel it inside of you because it has been proven that it takes at least 10 seconds to transfer positive feelings from the short memory from our second part of the brain to the long-term part memory of the brain in our third level of the brain. So just bathe in it, love it, in, in, embrace it, own it. Number three, affirmations. Though affirmations work mainly on the external, not on the internal, but just starting your brain with an affirmation that will take you to 
remain in a, in a positive vibe that will take you to be grateful, it will be great. It will be at least a beginning. And at least you are talking positive to yourself so your brain can focus on the positive. Number four, know your why in whatever you do. Your passion and your purpose will propel you into feeling good in no matter what happens through your life. Use the power of I am, and we did two podcasts about the power of I am. So go back and, and listen to it, uh, because we become what we decide to utter after the word I am. Number six, accept yourself for who you are, the good, bad, and ugly. You are who you are, just accept it. And when we totally accept ourselves, when we become self-aware of who we are, we help re-script and reinvent our beliefs, habits, emotions, perceptions, and even our confidence in our brain. Number seven, visualizing where we're going. The more we visualize, visualize things, the, the better or the easier it becomes. And that's why vision boards are great. It has been said that our brain needs to see a picture between three and seven times to have the ability to draft blueprints to achieve that picture. So if you have a vision board or even write something and put it on the level of your eye, even if you consciously don't look at it, subconsciously when you look at it, it your brain will start preparing to make it happen. Number eight, meditation. Meditation grounds you. It grounds me. And, and meditation doesn't have to be an hour. Take five minutes, ten minutes. Start with ten minutes, just ten minutes. And then add one minute a day or two minutes a day or three minutes a day. Meditation, again, will ground you, will make you focus. Mindfulness. Exercise a little bit of mindfulness with meditation. Again, it will ground you. Live in the present. It's, it's also a part of mindfulness. Live in the present, not in the past or the future. The past is past, and that's why it's called past. We have no control over it, and it does not define who we are. It was just a lesson we learned from, and we're moving forward. And we cannot control the future. We have no way of knowing how much in the future we'll be here. The only thing we control is the present moment. Exercise. Because while exercises, all the positive chemicals that counteract the stress hormones will be secreted or will be released, and it will bring you up to euphoria. So let me repeat the 10 things really quick. Be grateful. Remain in the positive vibes. Use affirmations. Know your why. Use the power of I am. Like, I am worthy, I am beautiful, I am wealth, I am health. Accept yourself for who you are. Visualize where you want to go. Meditate. Be mindful and live in the present. And exercise. Even if it's five minutes. Let's say it's five minutes. Be aware of negative thinking when it sneaks up on you and replace them with positive thinking. And it will not happen overnight but it's done one step at a time. By re retraining our brain, we will stop looking at our potential from a top of a mountain. We will actually start living it. So before I go to our last uh, part that I'm closing our podcast with, I want to remind you with the phone number if you want to call and ask a question or comment. The guest call-in number is 215-383-3736. 215-383-3736. Our beliefs, our culture, our values, our emotions, our habits, and our perceptions shape our lives. Only when we envision positively the future, 
and what the possibilities it might hold, that we are capable to overcome our limiting beliefs and think or start thinking about changing our lives to the better. Be the love, be the kindness, be the gratitude, be the success, be the beauty, be the abundance, be the light in this world. We all have a genius inside of us. We all have a light inside of us. Get the light from inside of you to enlighten people's path. You can do it. It's not fair if you keep it inside of yourself. It's not going to be easy, but you can do it because you're worth it. This is your host, Sahar Andrade. And again, I had the pleasure and the honor to share the last half hour with you. Wait for me next Wednesday at 5 p.m. If you want to reach me, you can email me at info at reinventyourselftogreatness.com. Our website is www.reinventyourselftogreatness.com. I would love to hear from you. And just to let you know some exciting news, I'm finalizing our Womanpreneur program, which is going to be uh, both a digital online program as well as I'm going to do some events uh, for Womanpreneur. And it will be a different program for entrepreneurship. It's not your typical business plans, marketing plan. No, it will, it will, we will build your business from the inside out. We will build you first as an entrepreneur and how to be successful in your mind and in your brain and how to have that attitude of success and then you can go and attack the whole world with no problem. And, of course, we'll give you the tools like branding, marketing, productivity, time management. So if you are interested, uh, go to women. W-O-M-A-N-Preneur-Program.com and go to the entrepreneurship page or sign up to my mailing list and I will make sure to get you all the news that you need. Till then, I love you. Be the light. You are the light. Share your light. This is Sahar Andrade. I'm out. Bye. Progressive presents Mind Flowness with Flow. Before you lie is a beautiful meadow. In that meadow, Progressive Direct has placed its auto insurance rates alongside those of competitors. You select the lowest rate and feel a great sense of calm. A great sense of calm. Compare Progressive Direct rates with competitors' rates so you can rest easy. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy.